Chapter 5. The Mental Universe. The universe is mental held in the mind of the all. The Kybalion. The all is spirit. But what is spirit? This question cannot be answered, for the reason that its definition is practically that of the all, which cannot be explained or defined. Spirit is simply a name that men give to the highest conception of infinite living mind. It means the real essence, it means living mind, as much superior to life and mind as we know them, as the latter are superior to mechanical energy and matter. Spirit transcends our understanding, and we use the term merely that we may think or speak of the all. For the purposes of thought and understanding, we are justified in thinking of spirit as infinite living mind, at the same time acknowledging that we cannot fully understand it. We must either do this or stop thinking of the matter at all. Let us now proceed to a consideration of the nature of the universe as a whole and in its parts. What is the universe? We have seen that there can be nothing outside of the all. Then is the universe the all? No, this cannot be because the universe seems to be made up of many and is constantly changing and in other ways it does not measure up to the ideas that we are compelled to accept regarding the all as stated in our last lesson. Then, if the universe be not the all, then it must be nothing such is the inevitable conclusion of the mind at first thought. But this will not satisfy the question, for we are sensible of the existence of the universe. Then, if the universe is neither the all nor nothing, what can it be? Let us examine this question. If the universe exists at all, or seems to exist, it must proceed in some way from the all, it must be a creation of the all. But as something can never come from nothing, from what could the all have created it? Some philosophers have answered this question by saying that the all created the universe from itself, that is, from the being and substance of the all. But this will not do, for the all cannot be subtracted from, nor divided, as we have seen. And then again, if this be so, would not each particle in the universe be aware of its being the all the all could not lose its knowledge of itself, nor actually become an atom or blind force or lowly living thing? Some men indeed realizing that the all is indeed all, and also recognizing that they, the men, existed, have jumped to the conclusion that they and the all were identical, and they have filled the air with shouts of, I am God, to the amusement of the multitude and the sorrow of sages. The claim of the corpuscle that, I am man, would be modest in comparison. But what indeed is the universe, if it be not the all, not yet created by the all having separated itself into fragments? What else can it be of what else can it be made? This is the great question. Let us examine it carefully. We find here that the principle of correspondence C lesson I comes to our aid here. The old hermetic axiom as above so below, may be pressed into service at this point. Let us endeavor to get a glimpse of the workings on higher planes by examining those on our own. The principle of correspondence must apply to this as well as to other problems. Let us see. On his own plane of being, how does man create? Well, first, he may create by making something out of outside materials. But this will not do for there are no materials outside of the all with which it may create. Well then, secondly, man procreates or reproduces his kind by the process of begetting, which is self-multiplication accomplished by transferring a portion of his substance to his offspring. But this will not do, because the all cannot transfer or subtract a portion of itself, nor can it reproduce or multiply itself in the first place, there would be a taking away, and in the second case, a multiplication or addition to the all, both thoughts being an absurdity. Is there no third way in which man creates? Yes, there is he creates mentally, and in so doing he uses no outside materials, nor does he reproduce himself, and yet his spirit pervades the mental creation. Following the principle of correspondence, we are justified in considering that the all creates the universe mentally, in a manner akin to the process whereby man creates mental images. And here is where the report of reason tallies precisely with a report of the illumined, as shown by their teachings and writings. Such are the teachings of the wise men. Such was the teaching of Hermes. The all can create in no other way except mentally, 
without either using material, and there is none to use, or else reproducing itself, which is also impossible. There is no escape from this conclusion of the reason, which, as we have said, agrees with the highest teachings of the illumined. Just as you, student, may create a universe of your own in your mentality, so does the all create universes in its own mentality. But your universe is the mental creation of a finite mind, whereas that of the all is the creation of an infinite. The two are similar in kind, but infinitely different in degree. We shall examine more closely into the process of creation and manifestation as we proceed. But this is the point to fix in your minds at this stage. The universe, and all it contains, is a mental creation of the all. Verily indeed, all is mind. The all creates in its infinite mind countless universes, which exist for eons of time, and yet, to the all, the creation, development, decline, and death of a million universes, is as the time of the twinkling of an eye. The Kybalion, the infinite mind of the all, is the womb of universes. The Kybalion, the principle of gender see lesson I, and other lessons to follow is manifested on all planes of life, material, mental, and spiritual. But, as we have said before, gender does not mean sex. Sex is merely a material manifestation of gender. Gender means relating to generation or creation. And whenever anything is generated or created on any plane, the principle of gender must be manifested. And this is true even in the creation of universes. Now do not jump to the conclusion that we are teaching that there is a male and female god or creator. That idea is merely a distortion of the ancient teachings on the subject. The true teaching is that the all in itself is above gender as it is above every other law, including those of time and space. It is the law from which the laws proceed, and it is not subject to them. But when the all manifests on the plane of generation or creation, then it acts according to law and principle, for it is moving on a lower plane of being, and consequently it manifests the principle of gender in its masculine and feminine aspects on the mental plane, of course. This idea may seem startling to some of you who hear it for the first time, but you have all really passively accepted it in your everyday conceptions. You speak of the fatherhood of God and the motherhood of nature of God, the divine father, and nature the universal mother, and have thus instinctively acknowledged the principle of gender in the universe. Is this not so? But the hermetic teaching does not imply a real duality. The all is one the two aspects are merely aspects of manifestation. The teaching is that the masculine principle manifested by the all stands, in a way, apart from the actual mental creation of the universe. It projects its will toward the feminine principle, which may be called nature, whereupon the latter begins the actual work of the evolution of the universe, from simple centers of activity onto man, and then on and on still higher all according to well-established and firmly enforced laws of nature. If you prefer the old figures of thought, you may think of the masculine principle as God, the Father, and of the feminine principle as nature, the universal mother, from whose womb all things have been born. This is more than a mere poetic figure of speech. It is an idea of the actual process of the creation of the universe. But always remember that the all is but one, and that in its infinite mind the universe is generated, created, and exists. It may help you to get the proper idea if you will apply the law of correspondence to yourself and your own mind. You know that the part of you which you call I, in a sense, stands apart and witnesses the creation of mental images in your own mind. The part of your mind in which the mental generation is accomplished may be called the me in distinction from the I, which stands apart and witnesses and examines the thoughts, ideas, and images of the me. As above, so below, remember, and the phenomena of one plane may be employed to solve the riddles of higher or lower planes. Is it any wonder that you, the child, feel that instinctive reverence for the all, which feeling we call religion, that respect, and reverence for the father mind? Is it any wonder that, when you consider the works and wonders of nature, you are overcome with a mighty feeling which has its roots away down in your inmost being? It is the mother mind that you are pressing close up to, like a babe to the breast. 
do not make the mistake of supposing that the little world you see around you, the earth, which is a mere grain of dust in the universe, is the universe itself. There are millions upon millions of such worlds and greater, and there are millions of millions of such universes in existence within the infinite mind of the all, and even in our own little solar system, there are regions and planes of life far higher than ours, and beings compared to which we earth-bound mortals are as the slimy life forms that dwell on the ocean's bed when compared to man. There are beings with powers and attributes higher than man has ever dreamed of the gods possessing. And yet these beings were once as you, and still lower, and you will be even as they, and still higher in time. For such is the destiny of man as reported by the illumined. And death is not real, even in the relative sense, it is but birth to a new life, and you shall go on, and on, and on, to higher and still higher planes of life for eons upon eons of time. The universe is your home, and you shall explore its farthest recesses before the end of time. You are dwelling in the infinite mind of the all, and your possibilities and opportunities are infinite, both in time and space. And at the end of the grand cycle of eons, when the all shall draw back into itself, all of its creations, you will go gladly, for you will then be able to know the whole truth of being at one with the all. Such is the report of the illumined, those who have advanced well along the path. And in the meantime, rest calm and serene. You are safe and protected by the infinite power of the Father-Mother Mind. Within the Father-Mother Mind, mortal children are at home. The Kybalion. There is not one who is fatherless nor motherless in the universe. The Kybalion. Celestial explorers, if the cosmic journey through the pages of Kybalion has left you starry-eyed and craving more cosmic wisdom, don't forget to show some love. Click the like button, subscribe, or drop a quick comment like you're acknowledging the cosmic forces at play.